Well, for more on the developing events in Egypt, I'm joined in the studio by the Lowy Institute's Anthony Bouvelo. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. Our correspondent said a short while ago that it was the army that was brought onto the streets to maintain control. The police apparently have disappeared. What do we make at the moment of the role of the army? Is it in support of President Mubarak? I think at this stage it is, but this is a very critical indicator um, that the, the, the regime has been forced to bring the army out, you know, what, three or four days into the protests, says to you that the regime feels it's in deep trouble. One thing that was interesting about when the army came out was uh, some of the protesters were cheering and applauding. Now, one of the interpretations of that is, which I think is true, that they were hoping that the army would side with them. But I think the other thing this reflects is their recognition that the regime is blinked. So what happens next? Why haven't we heard from the president? And do we need to see the army, for example, declaring its hand? Well, I think uh, we'll see that in, in coming days. Um, but I think the president and the rest of the regime are still working out what to do. I think they've been caught uh, by surprise at the speed at which events have, have occurred. Do you think they're still in the country? I think they're probably still in the country, but you know, it's anyone's guess. What about some of those things that the uh, White House spokesman was saying, that this needs to be solved by the people of Egypt and that this is a chance for the government to address the grievances of the people? Is there any likelihood that that's going to take place? Look, I think that's, that in itself is another critical sign that the regime, that Mubarak's presidency is in deep trouble. The fact that the US in a couple of days have gone from... Uh, declaring the regime stable, as, as Secretary of State Clinton did, to now talking about potentially reviewing the $1.5 billion in aid they provide to Egypt each year is a sign that they think the regime is looking uh, pretty shaky. Obviously, it's very hard to tell what's going to happen when the light of day comes in Egypt later tonight, Australian time. But what if there is anarchy? What will the regime do then? I don't think there'll be anarchy. I think um, the focus now is what happens to Mubarak. Um, I suspect that um, one way or another, whether it's tomorrow, next week, or even indeed in months to come, Mubarak's presidency is probably over. The question then is, is how the regime, uh, the rest of the regime tries to manage the transition. Other members of the regime will be trying to protect their positions to make sure they don't go the way of Mubarak. Exactly. I mean, there can't be a successor in terms of Gamal Mubarak, for example. No, so, so, so then what happens? Well, you'll first have to come to some kind of transitional arrangement and then look at well, what, how do you then you know, elect a new president or appoint a new president. And there, um, that at the very least would require some kind of constitutional revision because the, the constitution as it currently stands makes it very difficult for anybody uh, to run for president that is not a member of the ruling uh, National Democratic Party. And to simply allow the situation to continue as it is, to, to simply allow the NDP to continue uh, to run the show, uh, won't be acceptable to the protesters. What about the role of Mohammed al-Baradai? Apparently he is under some kind of a house arrest, or at least his movements have been restricted. What do we know about him at the moment? It's very unclear. The conflicting story is one that he was arrested and then released, another that he's under house arrest. I think the, the regime would be very worried about him mainly because he's a very well-known figure in the West. I mean, he's certainly well-known in Egypt, although he's not the kind of the great unifying opposition figure that, that some people think he is. Nevertheless, he could play a prominent role in some transitional arrangement. What's the possibility that all of this ends simply in a crackdown by the Mubarak government, who insists that things have to go back to the status quo? There is a possibility, of course, that the army will be successful of, of getting people off the streets, but I, I doubt it. I think even if they are successful in reigning in this protest, the chances of simply going back to business as usual are very, very slim.